The New Noel. It was a few weeks before Christmas on the island of Sodom, and all the engines were busy taking people and parcels around the island in preparation for the holidays. The Skarlowy railway engines were especially busy, taking many visitors up and down the line, from the mountains to the lake. Of all the little engines, though, there were three who were most excited of all, Sir Handel, Peter Sam, and Duke. They all loved this time of year, ever since their days on the mid sodor Railway. Duke was especially fond of the season. You're a love this time of year, Duke would sigh. Each Christmas I would take him on a special excursion to a mountain village. He brought them food and gifts, and they threw the most wonderful festival. Then at night, I took carolers along with him and paraded them around the railway. You could hear the music for miles. We remember, Grandpa, said Peter Sam. It used to wake us up, Sir Handel chuckled, and we worried Santa Claus would see we were awake and pass us by. Nonsense, said Duke. St. Nicholas wouldn't dare. It would never suit his grace. A few days later, the Thing Controller and the Fat Controller arrived at the sheds with some important news. This year, we shall be hosting our annual Christmas party at Crovens Gate Station, the Thing Controller explained. The standard gauge engines will be joining us this year, so I need all of you to work extra hard to help prepare the festivities. I want to make this a Christmas to remember. The engines were excited. Oh, just think of it, said Scarlowy. Everybody will be here with us this year. We'll get to exchange gifts, tell old stories, sing carols. What nonsense, Duke scoffed. This'll never do. Holding a huge bash in such a large station, so many people, so much noise. That would never suit his grace. The other engines stared. We need to celebrate Christmas in the mountains, Duke went on. Scarlowy Station seems a fine place. Quiet town, friendly people. But what about the standard gauge engines? protested Scarlowy. You'll still be able to see them, said Duke, but the Thing Controller wants this to be a Christmas to remember, and a party up at Scarlowy Station will fit the bill splendidly. You'll all love it. Mark my words, I shall make this a Christmas his grace would be proud of. A few days later, Peter Sam and Sir Handel woke up to see Rusty dashing about the yard. What's wrong, Rusty? they asked. The party supplies have gone missing, Rusty explained. They were here last night, but now I can't find them. Oh dear, where could they be? As Rusty hurried off in search of the party supplies, Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel exchanged a knowing look. You don't think... Peter, Sam began. I think we had better visit Scarlowy Station, Sir Handel said grimly, and the two engines quickly set off. Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel soon arrived at Scarlowy Station, where they found Duke with the missing party supplies. He was directing the townspeople on what to take out and where to put it. Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel were shocked. What do you think you're doing? Sir Handel demanded. I'm decking the town with white and red, Duke replied. Those were his grace's favorite colors this time of year. You can't just take these party supplies. Peter Sam cried. You can't just ruin our Christmas like that. I'm not ruining your Christmas, I'm making it better, Duke snapped. This is what his grace did for Christmas celebrations, and he was never wrong before. You're not his grace, Sir Handel hissed. Duke was unfazed. All the more reason to start now and make sure everything is just so, he said. I would have thought you two, of all engines, would understand. Well, we understand, Sir Handel said darkly. Come on, Peter Sam. Sir Handel stalked away, with Peter Sam following sadly behind. Later, Peter Sam and Sir Handel were idling in the shunting yards. Sir Handel was fuming. It's outrageous, he blustered. He spent all those years ordering us around, and now he goes and does this. He's gone soft in the boiler. He just misses how Christmas was when he was young, Peter Sam soothed. It still doesn't give him the right to ruin the holidays for everyone else, Sir Handel retorted. This time, we need to keep him in order. 
I agree, said Peter Sam, but we must take care not to hurt his feelings. He doesn't care. Why should we? Sir Handel spat. Well, he's still Grandpa, isn't he? Sir Handel paused, feeling terribly ashamed of what he had said. Tell you what, he said finally. I'll let you try and fix this your way, but if you don't do something soon, I will. Peter Sam swiftly agreed, and the two engines went their separate ways. For the next few weeks, Peter Sam agonized over what he should do about Duke. The Thing Controller was growing weary of replacing all the decorations Duke stole, and Sir Handel was getting ready to make his move. Finally, two days before Christmas, Peter Sam decided to talk to the Thing Controller at Crowland's Gate. Sir, don't be mad with Duke, he said. He's only trying to make Christmas like he remembers. Isn't there anything we could do to help so he'd stop taking the supplies? The Thing Controller pondered for a moment. Meet me at the sheds in an hour and bring Sir Handel with you. I have an idea. On the day of the party, Duke trundled up the Scarlowe station. He expected the festivities to be well underway, but when he arrived, Duke discovered that the town was empty and the decorations had been taken down. Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel were waiting for him, ready to take the townsfolk and party supplies back to Crovin's Gate. Duke was furious. You impudent scallywags! He fumed. What do you mean by ruining our Christmas party? This was never our Christmas party, Sir Handel retorted. You've always looked out for us, Duke, but now you're just looking out for yourself. I wanted a Christmas party that would make the Earl proud, Duke argued. Duke, you're a wise old engine, said Sir Handel. You've taught us a lot over the years, so we know what we mean when we say that this would never suit his grace. Duke was speechless. The party's waiting for us down there, Peter Sam said finally. Duke hesitated. It's not the same, he insisted. It doesn't need to be, Sir Handel burst out. You were so worried about making everything like Midsodor, when all we wanted was to spend Christmas together again. Duke looked pained. Come with us, Grandpa, said Peter Sam. We have a surprise for you. No, thank you, Peter Sam. Duke replied quietly. I think I'll stay here for the night. Suit yourself, Sir Handel sighed. Come on, Peter Sam. Sir Handel puffed quickly away. Peter Sam was slow to follow, and as he pulled out of the station, he whispered to Duke, We'll see you when you get there. Then Peter Sam was gone. Night had come on, and Duke sat cold and alone at the station. He couldn't stop thinking about what Sir Handel and Peter Sam had said. Oh dear, I have been foolish, he thought. I have almost ruined Christmas for the entire railway, and all in the name of his grace. He'd be so disappointed in me. Thank goodness for those two scallywags. They've certainly grown quite a lot. Duke sighed sadly, and started preparing himself for the long cold night ahead when he heard a sound. It was faint at first, but soon, Duke could make it out. The sound of a choir singing a slow, beautiful hymn. It echoed through the mountains. What a beautiful sound, Duke thought. Where could it be coming from? Curious, Duke left his siding and followed the sound of song down the line. Duke followed the music all the way to the big station. When he arrived, he stopped and stared in amazement. The station was lit up in thousands of twinkling warm lights, and all the engines, big and small, sang a soft, powerful rendition of O oh Holy Night. Duke spotted Peter Sam and Sir Handel at the front. He rolled up to them, his eyes watering. This is a lovely surprise, you two, he said in a thick voice. Peter Sam grinned. That's not all, he said. There's someone here to see you. A 
man dressed in fine clothing came up the platform. The Duke recognized him. It was the Duke of Sodor himself, Earl Richard Robert Normby. Your Grace! Duke gasped. Earl Richard beamed at Duke. My father always spoke so highly of you, he said kindly. I can see why. This is a splendid Christmas celebration, just like the ones my father held. He would be so proud. Oh, that reminds me. I have someone else here to see you. The Earl took a bundle of cloth in his arms and presented Duke with a baby boy gazing in wide-eyed wonder at all the lights and sounds. He giggled happily when he saw Duke. This is my son, William Richard Norrenby, the Earl explained. He was born back in August. This is his first Christmas. I'm so happy he gets to spend it together with you. Duke didn't reply, but his old eyes twinkled under the glittering lights as the Earl joined in with the singing. Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel grinned at Duke. How do you like the party then, Grandpa? They asked. It's perfect, Duke sighed happily. And I'm even happier that I can spend this Christmas together with you all. So, Duke joined the happy carolers in their festive song. And long after the party ended, and all the engines had gone to sleep, you could hear the soft sound of singing echoing across the railway, over the mountains and through the valleys, heralding the engines into a new Noel.